Uh, been part of that Buffalo scene forever, NFL for 100 years, does a great job. I haven't had a chance to talk in a while, so I guess say hello to him on this uh, Tuesday afternoon on his 13th day. Hello there, uh, Victor. How are you today, pal? Okay? Chris, I am great, my friend. Always great to be with you. Good to have you aboard. First off, I don't know how you feel about it, but boy, I tell you, I am shocked that Minnesota gave $90 million guarantee to a quarterback who has never won a playoff game in his life. What's your take on that? Me too. It's it's amazing and crazy how this escalation of quarterback salary continues to happen. I think we've had these conversations before. If we haven't had them together, we've had them separately uh, about how these numbers continue to rise. But it just makes you wonder about, for instance, and Aaron Rodgers, guys who've actually won championships, who have the pelts, and, and what they see when they look at the kind of money Kirk Cousins is getting. What is the reason? He's a good GM, that Spielman. Are they that? I mean, listen, they got to a championship game last year with um, with with uh, with uh, Keenan. They weren't going to beat the Eagles that day under any circumstances. They think that Cousins is that much of a difference maker. What is the logic with the Vikings right now? It, the logic is desperation. I think the logic is knowing that you only go so far without the the so-called franchise guy. They have defined him, obviously, as such. I don't know how much the money actually means that they have the faith in him that he's going to deliver uh, all these titles to them, but it's a piece that they feel they obviously didn't have as far as Case Keenum took them. Uh, they, they, they think there's just more of this, quote, purebred guy in Kirk Cousins, even though the Washington Redskins, who the last I checked, they know quarterback is an, is important too, and were never uh, willing to commit to him. That told me something. It told a lot of people around the league something. Chris, I think on the tombstone of every general manager in this league, it's going to be, I found the quarterback or I never found the quarterback. A hundred percent. It's so important to have that. We all know where we stand with that. All right, now Buffalo. I like what they've done here, Vic. I, I, you know, they've obviously positioned themselves to move up. Uh, you know, I don't know enough about this left tackle they traded, but they've been aggressive. They saved money with Taylor. They got a third round pick, I believe, out of that. Let me hear your take on the Bills here these last couple of weeks with a couple of moves. Go ahead. It's been impressive the, these last five days of making these two deals. Start with the Tyrod Taylor move. He wasn't going to be on this football team, Chris. He did not have a place on the Bills in 2018. So getting a third-round pick for him and the 65th overall from the Browns, who are, of course, the, the worst team in the league, uh, says a lot about the Bills' ability to get value where – this thing could have easily been a case of letting him go for nothing. So that's impressive. Uh, they had moved on from him, you know, when they benched him before that Chargers game. They, they saw his ceiling, and it's that of a runner and, and a, a conservative kind of thrower, but not a guy who ever picks up a football team and puts it on his back. That's what they want. The other deal that was made with Cordy Glenn, the left tackle, uh, capable of being a good, solid left tackle. He was getting premier left tackle money, but uh, I would never call him great. And lately, he's spent more time watching than playing, playing with foot and ankle problems. Also had a back issue earlier in his career. Moving on from him was not that big of a problem. And frankly, because Deion Dawkins, uh, the rookie they had from Temple last year, came in, stepped in at left tackle, and did a, a more than credible job and is the future at the position. And the key is now... By owning picks 12, the the 12th pick having been Cincinnati's, and having the 22nd pick, they are in a position where that move up for one of the so-called big four at quarterback uh, is is going to be less uh, involved, less of mortgaging the future, Chris, as far as like a first rounder next year. And I think that's the key. They can make that next move, or maybe the guy slides right to him. Interesting. We'll see about that. Now, the Bills, do you have a feeling of which one of the four you think the Bills like more than the other four, or do they like them all equally? Would they be satisfied with getting any of the four? What's your take on what they saw at the Combine? I, I don't have a true feel as to where they're leaning. The The only thing that's known is Brandon being the general manager, spent a lot of time in the fall uh, following around Mason Rudolph, watching his game. Now, he's not one of the big four. We know that. But he is a guy that, that you, you have to at least pay attention to because the Bills had their eyes on him. As far as the other players that we talk about here, the one that intrigues me the most, the one who I see as having the, the best fit for Buffalo is Josh Allen. Uh, Wyoming's uh, offense and his style of play, I think, puts him in a position 
where he could be pro ready a and b have that big strong arm that classic pocket presence all the things you could want from a player uh that would fit the kind of offense that i think uh Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean want in Buffalo. The opposite of really what they had from Tyrod Taylor. Uh, his his completion or his uh, yeah his accuracy completion percentage of being below sixty percent fifty six percent yeah, yeah 56%. it's bothersome. You you know you you rarely fix that as a pro, but. Overall, I, I think there's a lot to like with now, He's got a big arm so he can deal with the weather maybe in yeah. Buffalo too, correct? Right, Chris. That would be the big thing. You and I both know what he's got to deal with weather-wise. All right. Now, uh, where do they have to go to get him? I think the Browns are going to take Barkley. I think they saved the fourth I think the fourth pick. They take a quarterback. But I think they're taking Bar- myself. This is just me talking. I don't know anything. But I think they're going to take Barkley. And that means the Giants will have the first dibs on a QB. I'm assuming they're going to take one. I wouldn't guarantee it. But I'm assuming. Assuming they won't trade down, which means Buffalo then could move up to three if the Giants t- took Donald and then take Allen with that third pick if they wanted to, correct? Yeah, that's true. Uh, and, and they could move, you know, th- those could be the, the ripe spots for them to, to go uh, and look at. Keep in mind, Dave Gettleman has a relationship. Uh, Brandon Bean was his former assistant GM in uh in Carolina, so he, the, you, you've got to you know, lend some credence to that. Um, and then, and then when you you go down and, and look at the the other uh, players in this in this uh, uh, picture, um, who who is going to be head over heels to get a quarterback? Shaquan Barkley is everyone's thought, I think, as the best player period in this entire draft. So if that's the case then I think they go ahead and make him maybe pick one, possibly pick four, but they're going to go quarterback with one of those picks, and we don't know about the, the, the others. Somebody, I think, is going to fall. Obviously, there will be other teams that try to move up. I think what Buffalo does is survey the landscape, figure out who they're targeting, and then uh, try to put together something that involves – this is a team, Chris, with six picks in the first three rounds – uh, and nine picks overall in the first five. They've got some attractive and a, and a bounty of draft picks to work with this year. Well, if they wanted Rudolph, they didn't necessarily have to make this trade because they may have been able to get him at 22 anyway. So I have to think with this Bengals trade, no, unless they just wanted to make the trade for the m- purpose of making it, but I'd have to think that they had one of the top four quarterbacks, maybe the top three quarterbacks in mind before they pulled the trigger yet. Is that true? Yeah, I, I would say um, that there, there's a lot of truth to that. If in fact that's the way they want to go, but I don't don't over you know you can't you can't read things uh, or over uh, read in in terms of the situation. I Rudolph is somebody they tracked, but it doesn't mean that they're more in love with him than anyone else. As I said, I don't I don't have a true read that they're yeah head over heels over player X, and it's interesting because if if that's true. We would we would be hearing that now, and we haven't yet. So uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to just see how it plays out. And uh, and remember, you, you throw in uh, Case Keenum in, into this mix, right? Uh, signing with the Broncos. I mean, that's another situation where there was a an upper tier team thinking quarterback. Maybe they still are, but I doubt they're they're going to do that as high as they pick right now. Well ahead of the Bills. Yeah, the problem is if you're Buffalo, and you're right, you would think maybe the Broncos off the quarterback bandwagon, so maybe they would want to move down. But I don't know if you go to five if that's high enough if you have a particular quarterback like a Josh Allen in mind. If you're going to make a trade up, Vic, if that's what they want to do, to me you got to get to the third pick, don't you think so? Yeah, I, I think it makes sense that, the third, that that's the sweet spot, Chris, to get in a position of getting – your choice uh, of more than than one guy, right? And and it, we'll see. I mean, you work. You should work from a consensus. And and again, I think the the beauty of what this current regime is doing in Buffalo versus the previous one is it's not haphazard. There is a vision. There is a plan. And and it, they like to make they've liked to make splash moves here. Mario Williams trading up for Sammy Watkins, fourth overall pick for a wide receiver. On and on. This particular group seems to be doing things methodically and sticking to their mantra 
of we want to be good not just this year but next year and the year after. All right, yeah, I like what Buffalo's done there, Vic, and I gotta like what Cleveland's done. You've been you've worked in Cleveland for a while as well. I think the Browns have done a nice job. Dorsey knows what he's doing. You know, he's yeah. sitting there. He's sitting there with two picks, so he's in a perfect spot. Tyrod Taylor could play for a year. It's not the end of the world. They that I would take Barkley, and then I would take a quarterback at four. We'll see if he does that. But he made the move, got Kaiser to Green Bay. I mean, yeah. you know, so he he got a defensive back there. I I do like what Dorsey's done with the Browns, two franchises, Cleveland and Buffalo, that historically screw up. They do, <laughs> both of them, yeah. seem to have a decent idea what they're going on here before the draft in the uh, middle of April. You know that? Yeah, you, no, no question, Chris. And John Dorsey it has had, I think, a reputation of being a competent guy, has been around competent people in his time in the league. And it's sort of like, in fairness, Sashi Brown and, and that whole analytic, analytics thing that so many people trashed, uh, rightfully so because of the immediate uh, death that it brought to the team as far as trying to win games. But in terms of cleaning and, and giving them, uh, cleaning out a, a, a lot of what they had and leaving the, the, this giant pile of picks to rebuild it all, I think the right guy is the builder, right? The, the other guy tore it down. He's the right guy to build. It is. The Giants get him in. What do you think he might do with that second pick? You think the Giants have to take a quarterback with Manning at 37? Or could you see Gettleman getting out of that pick to get other folks and maybe let Manning play two more years? He's got Davis Webb there and solve his quarterback problem down the road. What do you think the Giants might do? I'm inclined to go that way, Chris, that that he tries to trade out of the pick knowing that there's there's probably more than one team that wants to be in a position to get ahead of others to get to, to, for the, for the quarterbacks for the so-called arms race and 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 enhance other spots on the team. Dave Gettleman, uh, the guy that I've known going all the way back to his scouting days in Buffalo, uh, is a guy that that's learned the uh, the sound sort of principle way to go. He is he is another one who doesn't do the reach for the fences splash move, show how smart I am. I think he's a guy that, that wants to accumulate uh, picks and, and build more of a, the sustainable thing and, and learn you know, from whatever the mistakes have been made before, if not his past, certainly by others. I think you can live with Eli Manning for a couple of years. You could bring somebody up. You don't have to take a quarterback at two. Take one maybe in the second round. Take one maybe in the third round, but accumulate your, your picks to do so. Now, I, he might do that. To the one thing, his buddy is Ernie, of course he. And remember, Ernie does take the quarterbacks. He wanted Elway. He took Eli. Ernie believes in that. He, you, know, he, you know, Ernie, with the history of the football, he loves the QB spot. So if he asks Ernie, Ernie might say, leave it alone and keep the pick there at number two. So it's, that's where the Giants are in a very interesting situation right now, what they're going to do with that second pick. It's fascinating. It really is. It, it's probably as intriguing as, as any. I, I, this whole draft, I mean, we're, you know, we talked about what Buffalo may or may not do to move up. You're talking about the Giants. The Browns remain an incredible story. I just think right across the board, we've got a lot of intrigue. Um, this should be a fun draft. All right, last thing, Vic. You like the, if the Jets and Min- and Arizona uh, get Bridgewater and uh, Bradford um, respectively, are you, mm-hmm. do you like those moves or do not like those moves? I, I, I'm okay with those moves. I'm not sure how necessarily the Jets would improve over Josh McCown for the one-year answer that I think Teddy Bridgewater is. He's he's the he's that that sort of trial contract guy. You don't know how he's coming back from that devastated knee. And the same with Sam Bradford, such a fragile guy. Cardinals desperate to have a quarterback. I mean, this thing just found landing spots for people that we knew were going to be out there. But have the Cardinals gotten better by adding him? Um, I, I, as I said, let's have the conversation. What? three or four weeks into the season, and is Sam Bradford still in one piece enough to take a snap? Yeah, interesting point. Great job, Vic. Always a pleasure. Keep up the good work. Appreciate you coming on today. Always great to be with you, Chris. Vic Carucci, thoughts on the Bills. We continue here on Mad Dog and